a combination of resistors when we have an infinite network. These are also called as, well, infinite ladder uh, network or in different, different books, they might give you different, different names. So what is actually in this kind of a problem? So they will tell you most of the time to get the equivalent resistance between point A and B. And this is how the, the network is going to look like somewhat, okay? Now, in these type of questions, what you need to do when you have got a question, which is like this, and it is extending up to infinity, how do you solve this? Because we have done similar thing, even in case of capacitor, I'm sure that you must have practiced it and you know it already. But even if you have forgotten it, don't worry, we'll do it again. We'll, I'll, I'll tell you all that again. So no need to worry that if you, if you still can't recall what you studied there, right? So it's always good. I would suggest it's always good that you practice networks together, like solve all the capacitors problem and resistors problem together because the questions are similar. The formulas also can be related. I've told you how to relate them as well. Anyways, how do we solve this kind of a problem? So what do we see? What do we observe in this question? In this question or in this situation or any question based on this type of network, you will see that there is a particular pattern and that pattern repeats itself and then this repetition goes on up to infinity. All right, and this is why it is called as an infinite network problem. So if you look at this particular scenario, you have R1 and R2, then again R1 and R2, R1 and R2. So this is a pattern which is getting repeated, right? Okay, so now the method to solve it. The first thing is to identify how you're going to identify that this is this type of a problem because there will be a network and in that there will be a combination of resistances and there will be a pattern which is going on repeating. No problem, okay? So the moment you have identified that it is a infinite network now goes for what to do to solve this kind of a circuit. First thing, we need to find the equivalent between A and B. So I will say, okay, equivalent between point A and B. I will assume that let us say that I can replace all of this, the entire pattern with one single resistance and I'm calling that resistance as R equivalent. So this is my R equivalent between A and B. No problem. Then the next step would be to think of the pattern that is getting repeated. The first idea is that assume the entire thing can be replaced by one single resistance and that resistance is nothing but R equivalent. Is the first step clear? Okay. Now the next step is to identify which pattern is getting repeated. Which pattern is getting repeated? And when you look closely, when you look closely, what do you observe? You observe that this pattern is getting repeated again and again, R1, then R2, R1, R2, R1, R2. Now what you have to do is keep one pattern like this and then can I assume the rest of it to be also equal to R equivalent? Can I say that? Because obviously it is extending up to infinity. So adding, adding a few resistance is not going to make any difference to it, isn't it? So you see, now I'll say that, okay, I'll just take this A, point A, and point B and I'll say, okay, I have identified the repeating pattern. So I'll keep just one pattern like that, which is R1 over here and R2 over here. And the rest of the circuit and the entire rest part of the circuit, I'll say that is equal to, also equal to R equivalent, correct? So now I'll say that now this is nothing but R equivalent. The moment you have understood this, it's now very simple because if I have to find the net equivalent resistance across A and B, or you can name this something else also because eventually the final result you're calling it as R equivalent. If you want, you can name it as X, Y, Z, no problem, okay? So now what will be the value of effective resistance in this case for the circuit? You can see R equivalent and R2 are in parallel to one another, parallel combination. So you get R2, R equivalent divided by R1 plus, sorry, R2 plus R equivalent. R2 plus R equivalent, correct? This is what you get on solving this one, correct? Because they are parallel to one another. And when you see this combination is in series with R1, so plus R1, this is what you get. This is the net effective resistance across A and B, right? But across A and B, the net effective resistance was equal to R equivalent only. What you have done over here is you have told that, okay, we'll just add one more pattern to it. That's it. 
Correct? Doesn't make any difference. So if you add or subtract some value to infinity, it is not going to make any difference to it. Now, you might say, sir, uh, like why did you do it like this only or why we are supposed to do it like this? Well, I told you that there is supposed to be a particular method. There is supposed to be a particular systematic way in which you should approach these special kind of networks. And this is what you have to learn, whether you learn it from me, whether you learn it from your school teachers or maybe from your friend or books, wherever you are, you should be learning this. You will understand that this is the go to method because this is what will help you to get to the final answer as quickly as possible. So you need to systematically follow each and every step. So what we have told, well, this eventually will be equal to what our equivalent. Now what we are going to get, we'll be getting a quadratic equation in our equivalent. And then finally on solving this, we are going to get two roots out of which the negative root we have to just, uh, you know, ignore. Why? Because the equivalent resistance cannot be negative. We'll just take the positive. Did you understand the steps? Yes. So what we are going to say again one more time, I'm just repeating everything. What we are going to say is this, this is the network and this is a ladder network, which is extending up to infinity. The first thing is to identify the pattern which is repeating. And again and again, I'm re-mentioning these things that you need to follow a particular structure, a particular pathway so that you can track and you can tackle all the problems which are based on this particular type. Okay. So first thing is to identify, identify that it is a infinite network problem. So as we can see, just by looking at the diagram in the question, you'll be able to figure it out. Then the next thing is to figure out what is the pattern that is getting repeated. So in this particular case, we see that R1, R2, R1, R2 is getting repeated. What we are saying is that let us assume that the equivalent resistance, I can replace all of it. Okay. And I can just put one single resistance and I'm calling this as equal to R equivalent, R equivalent between A and B. No problem. Now what I say is, okay, let's keep one pattern aside. And can I assume leaving this, can I assume this also to be equal to our equivalent? Why not? What is the problem? Because if it is extending up to infinity, then adding a couple of resistances doesn't matter, right? Okay, so going with that logic, what we say is, okay, now we take this one pattern, we keep it aside, and then we assume that the entire thing is also equal to our equivalent. Now what we do is, now we redraw the circuit, we redraw the circuit, how we are redrawing, we have this one pattern and the rest is assumed to be equal to R equivalent. We get the value of this parallel combination is equal to R equivalent times R2 divided by R equivalent plus R2, two resistances which are connected in parallel combination. And this equivalent resistance that we have got is in series with R1, correct? Obviously. So what do we get? The net equivalent resistance will be equal to R1 plus R equivalent times R2 divided by R equivalent plus R2. And this is the net effective resistance between point A and B. And we know the resistance between point A and B is equal to R equivalent only, right? Okay, so this is what we get. Now all we have to do is just make a quadratic equation out of it. As you can see that we can just multiply this and what we are going to get is R1 times of we are going to get or uh, R1 times of if I just take this over here R equivalent plus R2 plus R equivalent times R2 divided by R equivalent plus R2 and is equal to R equivalent. Now you can take this R equivalent plus R2 on the other side. What you're going to get this will be equal to R equivalent times R equivalent plus R2. Okay. Now just uh, multiply them and then get it in form of the quadratic equation. So what you're going to get, you just have to multiply it and solve it, right? So what you're going to get is R equivalent squared, R equivalent squared minus R equivalent times R1 minus R1 R2 is equal to zero. Now this expression is a quadratic expression in R equivalent. Now certainly the values will be given to you. Of course, right? So when you solve this, you are going to get two roots. Now you have got two options because depending upon the values that you have, whether you'll be able to either factorize it and get it simplified or otherwise you can just use the formula of the roots or finding the roots of the quadratic equation that is minus B plus or minus root over of B square minus 4AC divided by 2A. So you know this formula already. There's something which is very basic, right? So 
you need to you need to understand that once you have got this quadratic equation then half of your thing is done all you have to do is you have to find the root and then if you're getting two roots one is positive another one is negative then you should only take the positive root why because negative one is not possible since the effective resistance or equivalent resistance cannot be a negative value so if we understand this what we are going to do further is from here now we, we have got this expression r equivalent is equal to r equivalent r2 divided by r equivalent plus r2 plus r1 and so we solve this and we get r equivalent like this so we are going to get two roots and out of these two roots which one we are going to keep we are going to keep the one which is up having a positive value all right now one more thing is just remember it till this step i'm telling you just remember it till this step of forming of the quadratic equation how you are going to form the quadratic equation or you can just remember it till this step further i would not say to re re write the the final result or the roots of the expression as a formula the reason being you might be given different values you might be having a different pattern altogether so there is no single formula for this type of a question don't don't just write down and star mark the single formula don't do that all right remember the method to do it this question i can only teach you a method we don't have one single formula which will help you to you know crack any question like that we have taken r1 r2 like this they might give you some other arrangement some other pattern which might be repeating so how will i know that nobody can know that nobody can guess that right but the method of solving questions like these is going to remain the same so that is what you need to learn so what we are going to do is we are going to identify the pattern then we are going to just leave one one part one branch which is having that pattern and the rest we are going to assume it to be equal to our equivalent then we'll reconsider the circuit again we'll reconcile things and then we will attach this r equivalent then again we are going to find the equivalent resistance across a and b and that we are going to equate it to r equivalent itself